last week saw psychic Sally, an old friend of Princess Diana's, accused of cheating in a live show. A member of the audience claimed they heard a man backstage feeding Sally information in secret. So, are psychics all they seem? One woman who insists psychics are not fakes is Lee Catherine, who claims that she herself speaks with the dead. Then there's magician Paul Zennon, who says communicating with the dead is nothing more than a load of old crystal balls. So let's, um, let's look at this controversy first of all. And this is the way it's been reported. Um, a, a fan who was sitting in the back row of the Grand Canal Theatre in Dublin during one of Psychic Sally's shows told a radio station that uh, she could hear a man's voice through an open window behind her claiming that everything he said the psychic was saying ten seconds later. She added that uh, when theatre staff realised members of the audience could hear the mysterious voice during the performance then the window was closed. But Stephen Fallon, the general manager of the theatre, said the voice came from two lighting technicians who were talking during the show. So absolutely not a clear cut case one way or the other here. And then in a statement uh, from her website, the recent performance at the theatre I felt was a fantastic show. I was completely unaware that two young lads who are employed by the theatre as technicians had been accused of feeding me information. I would like to state that I have never met these two boys before in my life. More importantly, they have nothing to do with my show. I have no communication with them. There is no way that they would have been able to talk to me whilst I was on stage. I receive hundreds of emails and letters from people who I have helped over the years and their support inspires me to continue what I do. Which, of course, you know, we can't judge that one way or the other, but it certainly opens up I the topic think I can for conversation. Judge it uh, with something I found um, yesterday. Um, basically, um, she's not denying that she gets any communication from someone. She's denying specifically the lighting people. Well, she says that it, only her, her headset is purely a microphone. She does not yeah, perceive. That's the head, what she the said. headset. Uh, with the microphone is purely a microphone and she can't get messages from that but she hasn't denied having a separate earpiece which is on the other side and I'm not saying for legal reasons I'm not saying she uses it every show and I particularly think she won't be using it this week but if you have a look at her biopic that's on on the net it's mm. a link from her own website mm. it's called the psychic life of Sally Morgan mm. part five on YouTube five minutes 30 seconds in there's a shot of her walking off stage taking off the microphone and a separate earpiece which she leaves dangling. It's an earpiece. Mm. She has worn an earpiece on stage. Well, we, I haven't seen that, so we couldn't possibly come okay, to that's my, the my that, opinion, that, that but I, I challenge her to deny that. Um, you say that there is no such thing as a sixth sense. Uh, the sixth sense is a vague term because we all have intuition, which I think is based around making you know, subconscious decisions about things, but I don't think anybody is telepathic and I don't believe particularly that people can contact the dead, which is the major issue here. I have no real problem with people telling fortunes. Yeah, that's the kind of fun side of it, you know, and it's, it's, I don't think it's healthy, um, but the, the problem I have is when people pretend they can talk to dead people, particularly when they're doing it for profit. And you, you say that you, could, you base this, base Basically, because once upon a time you learnt the tricks, as you call Absolutely. it, and you I did mean, it yourself. Yeah, I've, I've been a, a magician for 30 odd years. Uh, when I was a teenager, I learnt from a guy uh, in Blackpool, my sort of mentor, about these techniques, which we'll probably talk about when cold reading, things like that. And it's basically about judging people's body language, the way they're dressed, the way they react to things, and you basically fish around uh, and tell them things that are quite generic but sound very specific. You know, when someone goes and sees a psychic or a fortune teller, they always do this line about, well, they couldn't have known that thing. Mm -hmm. I always advise them to record uh, uh, the session because actually there'll be about 70 or 80 misses for every hit. OK, well, on the other side, Lee, um... Um, you say that you were born with this sixth sense, if that's what, this, this sort of gift, I guess, of being able to contact the dead. Absolutely. If Sally did it, I'd be very surprised, because Sally is usually on the money. I'm not she sure certainly how, is on the money. how something can be generic yet specific, because that's totally... The disparity there is, you know, very, very huge. However, there are, unfortunately, lots of charlatans mm. acting as psychics mm. and preying on people's vulnerability. And at the end of the day, we're dealing with people's lives here, mm. and they should be accountable to law if they're conning think, people yeah. out of case, it. Absolutely. Obviously, there's going to be some charlatans out there. Of course, there is in any profession. Do you think if you took away the exchange of money, that would separate the people who were really doing it for the greater good and the people who were doing it for That's profit? That's a good question. Why, if it's a gift do you know what I mean? and it helps people, why do they charge money for it? If people didn't want to pay for services, they wouldn't pay for services. And I think to a degree, one is saying on... Paul's defence 
that the public are very gullible and they're very vulnerable and they can be duped quite easily. So I think we're underestimating the public. I'm not saying that every member of the public mm. is not gullible or vul vulnerable, because they are. Well, let's talk about the way, that, in that case, if, you, if you, you say that you can talk to the dead and you don't do, you don't do the cold calling, you don't do the fishing. I don't even know what cold calling That's is. Cold, cold reading. Cold reading. Yeah. Um, and so do you fish, do you fish for, for what you want people to... How, can I, if, if I come to you, because um, right. I always think that if you if you if you want to completely test the person that you're going to go and see, I, I come to you, and uh, and I say there is someone that I desperately want to know from. I want to hear from this person, but I'm actually not going to say another word. Could you please contact them and tell me? Yeah, mediumship is evidence. Okay, it's evidence of survival after physically passing away. If you were 70 years of age and I said, oh, I've got your grandfather in spirit. Hello, at 70 years of age, granddad's going to have gone to the other side and be in spirit. Evidence is stuff like maybe how they passed, mm -hmm. how they looked, characteristics, mm -hmm. possibly months of anniversaries such as birthdays, their date of passing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I could cold read a dead can, person can I, because I'm not actually that? sure. Let me speak, please. What a cold reading or hot reading, as I've been hearing about all week, with this, in light of Sally's allegation. Well, it's body language. I don't know isn't what it, it is, it's but I body can't language pick and generalizations, up yeah. body language of a dead person. I can pick it up, and so can many other. No, people no, no. The body don't. language is of the living yeah, person, so I'm you saying. can see a twitch. You, you can read a twitch the, in someone's well, eyes. I if... don't really look for twitches because the way I work, but this is only the way I work because everybody works individually in whatever job they're in, mm. is that I tend generally to kind of turn myself slightly this way mm. as I'm concentrating, so half the time I'm not even looking Under at my clients. Under what circumstances can you do that reading? Is there a specific time and a specific environment that you have to be in to do, to do your reading? When I'm, when I'm booked, I mean, it need, you know, there needs to paid. be peace and quiet. Yeah. Um, and that's can you do it, it for me now? Not now, because Why? I've come on here to debate stuff. I've not come on here to be a trick this pony. I'm thing, not saying I can't no do it, yeah. thing, but there's a room full of people. In, in 150 and, no, no, years no, no, of this, and there's and no also, proof. I also say to people, I don't read in public because we ne I do to a degree, but I never know what's going to come out do because you... we don't. Because everybody's lives, are, they're confidential and they have a right to confidentiality. I can give you examples of things that I've done in terms of bringing evidence that there is life after death. I have no, you know, problem with that. Where is the evidence? But there's evidence... Where? What? In, if you let me finish, please, I'll give examples of what I've said to clients, and clients have taken great that's, comfort... That's not proof. ..and reassurance from that, you know? It, the proof is, when I've described to them how their loved ones who they've lost, whether it's a husband, a child, a mother, a but, father, but where is the actual how, evidence excuse that? me, how it's they've looked, anecdotal. what they passed away from. It's it isn't scientific. anecdotal. It is scientific because it it's not. proof. Okay, so Science therefore, Science is about Lee, proof. Yes, Thank and there you. is not. Let's, let's, I just want to ask you then, so we've heard how you do it. Mm -hmm. When you were doing this before that you decided not to do it anymore, you were doing cold reading and fishing, and, mm -hmm. and I just wonder whether you could give us a, a sort of example of how you do this and how yeah. easy it is. Well, absolutely. I mean, um, the, the important thing that we haven't covered, which is what most of the stage psychics use, is, is actually pre-show work. It's not just the cold reading, that comes later. Pre-show work is basically people milling about in the foyer, listening to conversations of people as they're going into the theatre. Um, there's plenty of people wandering around with handheld radio microphones in the theatre, listening to stuff which is being fed back to the medium a lot of the time. Can I just read you, this is from Sally Morgan's website. Get to the venue early to take full advantage of the many ways that Sally can give you a message. You can complete one of Sally's love letter cards in the uh, venue foyer and leave a question for Sally. You can leave a video message on Sally's special psychic cam, and you can bring a photo of a loved one past and Sally's able to connect with them in a spirit world. <laughs> once again, so all this stuff has been know, handed in. Once again, we don't know how, website. but we don't know how she's interpreting that. We don't know how she's using it because she's not here to defend no, herself. I, I so it's think important I do that she know. says that. But. You say you can use a, a handful of, uh, of, of, of questions uh, to get a response. Sure. So would, would, what, would you do that, okay. do that now? Let's, and, let's by, do that. We will come back to you, by the way. No don't, worries. Uh, don't worry. Right. These, these are what are known as Barnum statements, and it's basically, um, you know, well, let's, let's just do it. Five, five quick things. Directed at person one who's viewing this. You make friends very, very easily but you've actually got very few close friends. And part of the reason for that is because you tend to bottle things up and you should let things go. And fairly recently, 
you feel you were betrayed by a friend. It's actually partly your own fault, but you still feel that you're betrayed by a close friend. Secondly, um, there's an older man that you associate with the initial B, an older man who's probably in your family or close to your family, and he's always suffered long term with a pain at the sort of back of his chest region, okay? But when you think of him, you always think of that daft thing that he does that makes you laugh. Thirdly, you're generally outgoing. You make friends easily. That would apply to number one as well. Uh, you are sociable, but just occasionally you feel really detached and insecure about yourself. It's almost as though you're kind of zooming out and watching yourself from a camera from above, something like that. Number four, you've got a scar. It's only a small scar, and it's not from an operation. It was from an accident you had years ago, and it's on your left leg in the middle. Um, Number five, I... you have a recurring dream, final one, recurring dream where... You're falling, right? Not falling, but almost flying down an escalator or some stairs, right? This alternates, only, you only have it very sporadically, with a dream about being held underwater. You're struggling to catch your breath, OK? Well, it's kind of me, basically. All the I way mean, through, she's going, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's totally... The letter B, my dad's Brian. I have got a scar on my left leg in the middle. Um, all of those things. Like... I, I, all, think, all think, of those things in some way. Think, I think can about your father for a second. Just... Like, I'm, I'm on TV, so everybody thinks, oh, you're all chatting and this and the other. But do you know, when I get home, I'm really quite quiet. Why am I getting so... a picture of your dad in a kind of greenhouse or a conservatory? Did he used to do a joke about something to do with people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, something like that? <laughs> so, what, what you. Okay, my, my dad does work for double glazing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. what we're about your mum? You can think real. about your mum because I just there's a there's a I don't want to see here but there's a small plane going past there yeah. and I'm getting a picture of something when you were a teenager there's something to do with a a parrot repeating something about it's pretty Polly it's something like that but then the the parrot turns into an aeroplane and you're shouting mummy as a kid you're pointing out the window and shouting mummy at the plane does that mean anything I don't know well pretty Polly might have been. But then I don't... I mean, you're doing this because you know it's fate. I mean, none of this is real. You're just making this up, aren't you, from no. but cold reading? This has all been a scam to mm. launch my career as a genuine psychic. <laughs> I think it's, it's very important that we, uh, that we get another side to the argument here. Lee, Lee uh, you have listened to all of that. I'm booking in myself for a reading later. <laughs> what, um, what, what, do you, what do you say? What do you say to all of that? It's pretty compelling stuff. It is compelling, and it's also... You know, these people that are acting as charlatans, I mean, it's the first I've heard about people, I'm, I'm sure they do it, I'm not denying that they do it, stage psychics, as they're called, that send people as spies into the foyer and stuff like that. If I do a show, I can't afford to pay people to do that and get all the tacky thing and ask for photos and messages. I don't ask for that. But that's just me. I don't know how other people work. But the thing is, what I will say, I've uncovered a con artist who was posing as a psychic some years ago. And I approached Trading Standards to help out, and they basically refused. So if on there what are because I was another psychic, and they couldn't take my word for it. Mm. So my answer was: so if I a doctor, it, yeah, I think so. So I said, if a doctor reported another doctor for medical negligence to the GMC, would they not take their word for it? So to a degree, people are saying there are laws to protect the public, but then can, they don't go and act on it. Can I suggest it. something, just very quickly? Uh, it's something we haven't covered. There is a, a prize offered of a million dollars in the States, and it's worldwide, if anybody can prove they have any psychic ability of any kind. It's been open since 1964. It started as a thousand dollars. For years, it's been a million dollars. They've had hundreds of applicants, and it's scientifically tested. Whatever the per person claims they can do, they design a test around that Would claim. Would you have a go at that? Million, and it's, million million if, if, if someone is psychic, why is that not been claimed since 1964. A million go. dollars. Donate yeah. it to charity. Maybe give it to a charity that deals with counselling the bereaved. Last word. Well, uh, after my reading with Paul, I'm going to get him to give me a lift to Heathrow. Do you think you can have the million, uh, the million dollars? Oh, absolutely. We'll and I'll give we'll... half of it to Paul if Let's I win it. it eh? can, can we do that and come back and talk about it? We'll send a crew with you. We'll pay for your flights. Lovely. I love the States. Cool. Terrific. OK. A million, million dollars. It's the James Roundy Educational Foundation, if anybody wants to apply so, for that. So, thank you both.